Good morning. As mayor of Barcelona, I'm delighted to welcome you to Barcelona for this International Congress of Feminist Economy after the event in Bilbao. Thank you, Amaya, for being here to pass on the button. I also want to thank Angel Svito, Vice Chancellor, for competitivity and occupability of the Open University of Catalonia. She will soon be the dean. It's great news. And I also want to thank the Open University uh, Cathedra on Digital Economy, who have supported the Congress, and they foster actions to make sure that the public policies and the ecosystem of the city is up to facing the challenges of the platform economy. I will now speak Spanish. The mayor will speak in Catalan. And uh, I want to obviously greet everybody who is here and who is following us online. For Barcelona, it is very important to welcome this Congress on, in general, the digitization of life. From Barcelona City Council, we've been fostering actions against the feminization of poverty and precarity in favor of feminist economy. And those actions have led, or well, have been speeding up and have had an action on energy and digitization, which are crucial, obviously, for the present and the future of our city. Now, please allow me to briefly refer, well, I have to, to the economic and social crisis which affects us and affected us a lot through the pandemic. The current economic system, however, holds us in permanent economic crisis, but to that we had to add the pandemic of COVID-19. And uh, once again, as tends to happen in the capitalist system, when there is a crisis, it tends to affect the women hardest. The pandemic made it visible for those who didn't want to see it before, how important care and essential work is, making it visible and valuable. All those things which had been invisible and undervalued for too long. Amongst others, we saw how essential it is the work done by the women who work in all people's home, the women who work uh, at home, carers, they are all every day supporting in our city and worldwide. They're supporting life. It is obviously feminine work, women's work in precarious circumstances and with the problem of class uh, struggles. This economic and social crisis affected particularly women who were in a precarious situation such as uh, domestic workers, particularly migrant ones. Also, the increase of housework fell on women's shoulders, particularly in those homes where there was telework, work from home, particularly work from home tends to affect the care work burden. It has to be regulated. In Barcelona, we're doing what, what we can. You know that municipally, there's not a lot we can do, but we are the closest administration and therefore, we use our creativity and cooperation and all our networks to do our best. Actions, for example, to improve the situation of feminine, more feminized uh, industries. For example, we've created the space Barcelona Cuida to provide counseling for uh, house workers, the card for special services for care workers, some specific information points for all women workers to be able to stand up for their rights. Also, measures to foster stable labor, such as the service Villa Vena, which helps us work as a community, caring for the community. Also, the service Concilia for municipal babysitters to fight uh, sexist violence, or also to lead other training uh, sessions from Barcelona Activa. I also want to underline the actions we've carried out to work for equality in ICTs. We've worked with over 3,000 women on three main blocks, labor and training, visibility, recognition and resources for projects led by IT women and 
IT vocations amongst young girls. I want to focus on the training program for women in precarious situations. We're very proud of it. Laura Perez, who leads the sector for feminisms, and Tatiana, who's also been working on the program. And those of us who had a chance to see the project firsthand, it was really, really moving. We women, we know that we are over 50% of society, but in our city, only 26% of ICT jobs are held by women. Furthermore, only 8.6% of them are in technical positions. These figures show the inequalities, the obvious discrimination imposed on us by decades, considering that certain activities were more suitable for men than women, like some activities are considered to be more suitable for women in a completely arbitrary and unfair way. We know this is false, but it's there. And this lie is a barrier for many women who love, are interested, and can be amazingly good at this, same or even better than men, don't go into this field because they're not sure of themselves, they, they are surrounded by men, prejudices, etc. This means that women have been held in subordinate positions and we are still fighting for that unfair system. And when this happens in, a system, in, in an industry as important as ICTs for our future, it's alarming because it can make deeper the inequalities of the present for the future. We've got to change that now. What we're doing in our program is we're sorting out a prior unfairness, which is that women were discriminated against because they were women, and it was harder for them to go in the ICT industry. And this is a feminist policy because feminism means equality, and if there is no equality, it has, you have to do something to achieve it. Over 70% of the women who came from this program are now working in the industry. This is a success, particularly bearing in mind that this program focused on women with vulnerable situations of precariousness and violence. Therefore, it is particularly important to see that when the conditions are there, things happen. Women who were completely excluded from the labor market as a whole and the technological labor market in particular are now programming because they were trained and they had a chance. So if with a little municipal program with not a lot of resources, we get this result over 70% immediately hired as programmers, it's just a matter of changing municipal policies and generating opportunities. At any rate, it is not an isolated action. Barcelona is the scientific capital for many years for the whole of the state. This is a key industry for the economy and the future of our city, and we want to give it a feminist outlook. When we then talk about the Mobile World Congress, the Audiovisual Congress, and they say that, yeah, we are the seat for many technological companies who have their main offices here, yes, we need to see how we include the feminist outlook, outlook because we want to lead in, in, the, in that industry, but with a feminist outlook. We want to have that cross-cutting outlook. Ever since we got to the uh, City Council in 2015, we created the feminism, Feminisms Department, which didn't exist before, to provide more resources for women in situation of difficulties because of sexist situations and with a cross-cutting approach so that all policies in the city council could have a feminist approach in budget, in our flowchart, in urban planning. Absolutely all the fields need to have this cross-cutting element if we really want to be a more democratic city. Everything I've said so far and lots more is going to be taken up by you in your presentations, your uh, sessions, your roundtables with representatives from public institutions and many international experts in the field. We're particularly thrilled that over 170 institutions worldwide are presenting your work at this Congress in Barcelona. I wish you a fruitful Congress to benefit all of us. We want to keep moving forwards, consolidating a feminist economy and building a fairer world with equal opportunities for women. And we're saying this on a day when there are more and more voices about this financial crisis worldwide, which 
make it clear how important it is to subvert this unfair economic system which is depredating, which generates violence, unfairness, and we need to make feminist economy not an anecdote, not something in the periphery, but we need to put it at the core for our economic system change if we want to have an opportunity for a better life for us, for our daughters, our sons, for everybody. So thank you for being here. Thank you for what you do every day. I hope Barcelona will always be your home. Barcelona wants to be a feminist city. We know that there is a lot to be done, but we know we'll make it together. Thank you. Y es un honor pasarle la palabra a Maya. Muchas gracias, Maya. Es que ricas como muchas gracias. Egunon, economía de Bilbao, Luzko, Sortzigarren, Congreso, Honetara, Urbildu, Sarian, Guztioi. Buen día a todas las personas que nos han venido a la Congreso, 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 que nos han venido a este octavo Congreso de Economía Feminista. It's the eighth running, but it has a history of over 20 years, exactly 18 years, when a number of hard-working visionary academics began the first running in Bilbao. Some of them have since retired, others have not yet, but they all saw the opportunity to learn and participate in the previous running in 2021, which was marked by the uncertainty of the pandemic, which has shown just how vulnerable our bodies, territories, and women in general are. That was a running in which we had to face digitization when all of us, at least those of us from Bilbao, were completely analog, except for our beloved Dorleta. That was a running in which we missed the face-to-face -face aspect, the tangible aspect of living in events such as this, something so important in a feminist economy. At that time, we felt each other but could not touch each other. So I think we were all looking forward to this eighth running, where I'm sure we will continue to build those hybrid spaces in which to grow, live, exchange knowledge, etc. Space that is safe in which academics, feminists, and other transformative agents can meet. As Amaya Rodko said the other day, that we hope that this will bring together the spirit of weavers, weaving a new society, a new economy. That is what feminist economy means to us. That's what we began to do so long ago at the first feminist economy congress. And I'm sure it will mark each of the future runnings that we hold. It was an honor for me to close the previous running, just as it is an honor to greet you here this morning. I remember in the previous running, Yolanda Juleto, the coordinator of that Congress, came up to me and said, Amaya, we thought, if you think it's okay, that since we have opened this Congress, as Antonella Picchio was opened by the old school feminist, that the young blood, a young feminist, should close it. What do you think? And how could I say no? So I had to take the dive, so to speak, and it was an honor to hand over the torch to my colleagues from Barcelona, even if it was online. That handing over of the torch, from what I found out, will result in a Congress that's beyond all of our expectations, not just for what we will do today, but all the work you've done to collect and digitalize the records from previous runnings, and which I'm sure will help us all to be as useful as possible and make that information as useful as possible. It is an honor to be here with you, Ms. Mayor, Adekalau, and the Vice Rector, Angels Vito, and to pass on the torch for the opening of this Congress and to do so face to face. So just a moment, if you'd bear with me. Okay, since we're live and I was on the plane, I was not allowed to bring needles. But this is my craft work. Nearly two years ago, Mayo, when I handed over the torch virtually, because I was nervous at the time and also was not aware, I could not greet you in your language. But I said, I'm challenging myself to do it the next time in person. So 
If you would excuse my Catalan, on behalf of all of the Bilbao colleagues, I would love to give you this set of knitting needles, which for us symbolizes the work of so many women who often, from an invisible plane, weave networks of safety to sustain life, to continue to weave these networks. Thank you very much for offering these days of meetings, and we hope to weave together a colorful tapestry. So I know I have a very closed Catalan accent. I will now translate it into Spanish. I was saying to Mayo that I wanted to give her these balls of yarn and knitting needles, which symbolize the work of so many women, often from an invisible plane, weave to sustain networks of safety for life, to continue weaving these networks. Thank you for these days of meeting together, and we hope to weave together a great and colorful tapestry all together. Thank you very much and good day. And now I'd like to give the floor to the vice rector and current rector or dean, Angels Fito of the Open University of Catalonia. Good morning. It is a joy to see this auditorium so full. Ms. Mayor, Amaya, thank you for your kind words. Thank you to all of our guests for being here today. It is truly a pleasure to see a full house this morning. And I'd like to say hello to all of our colleagues from equality, cooperation, research, academics, communication, all of these sectors are present here today, thanks to you, making a contribution with your presence to this enormous collective effort that is this Congress. Oftentimes we say that in university life, we get the gifts of these happy coincidences as there is a convergence of the institutional side of things with the academic side of things. I work in business economy uh, like my colleague Sole and how ec economy and economics can influence in good governance of organization. And I could give you many examples of that in this case from things that we know empirically. And this first intervention as the future rector of the Open University doing so here is very humbling, but at the same time is a great honor. Institutionally, it's an even greater honor to receive the torch from Bilbao and to do so in a setting such as this. Let's uh, be careful with those needles. They're not allowed on the airplane. But as I was saying, to do so within the realm of feminist economy, how from the Open University we humbly make our contribution to the digital aspects with scalability, capillarity, being able to reach anywhere in the world with our activity. Furthermore, this eighth running has been a very stimulating challenge, and I'm sure it will manifest itself in an exemplary, modelic meeting, the conclusions and impacts of which we'll be receiving throughout the year. And this underscores the leadership from the shared chair of the municipal government of Barcelona and the Open University of Catalonia, and led in this case by Dr. Mayo Fuste as the lead researcher, the principal investigator of the Demons Group. And proof of this is not only this auditorium full of people, but the many more people who are involved in this world and all the projects that we will hear about over the next day and a half. And I think it consolidates the international dimension thanks to the significant presence from Latin America who are watching us online. The work and all the projects that we will hear about and do over the next day and a half, the experiences that we'll be sharing in this Congress, but also outside that go well beyond the doors of this Congress, the exchange, the dialogue, the debate, it appeals to me directly as a person who forms part of the government of an institution that has the ambition 
to train, to transform. We do so through digitalization, but not only that way, but through a diverse outlook, which obviously includes the feminist perspective in its entirety. Integrating that feminist outlook, we know this from all of our different areas, is a challenge for these common areas that we share as it is whenever we begin this debate. But it enriches our understanding of economic phenomena, and it integrates a key element for the future. It allows us to analyze in the most comprehensive way possible a phenomena such as complexity. We live in a complex environment. Complexity means the ability to predict future events. Economists can speak very eloquently about this because we never get it right, but that is complexity defined not just by the elements that make up those complex systems, but also the interactions that take place among the different agents that form part of an ecosystem in that phenomenon and predicting how we will relate to each other in the future. The feminist outlook is of utmost importance and, in a word, allows us to build a better economy. As our mayor has said, it's not a matter of just a critically adding the gender perspective, the feminist perspective to what exists, but to make clear how you can't understand transformations, those of the past, present, or future, without this contribution, without much of the content that we will be hearing about and discussing over the coming days. So it's not just a fad. It's not just a quota. It is purely about making a better economy. And we have clear evidence that tells us that when we integrate in a structural way the feminist outlook, the result is a better economy. I heard recently from a student at the Open University, a female student who was worried because when we analyzed the Industrial Revolution, we included an interpretation that included the silenced role of women whenever we explained the Industrial Revolution. And that student said, that's making for a bias in the analysis of a phenomenon that is so key to understanding where we are today, the Industrial Revolution. Well, after analyzing the texts and debating in depth the content of the role of women during the Industrial Revolution, the student, sorry, it was a male student, the student not only was happy and satisfied with the work that we did on the Industrial Revolution, he said, with this transversal view, with this multidisciplinary analysis, including the feminist perspective, not only do I have a new understanding of the Industrial Revolution, but I see how I've overlooked so many other things as I have studied and understood the history of humanity, and especially in terms of economy. When we talk about the feminist economy, we must know that this goal bears a very significant symbolic meaning. It goes beyond justice, equity, reparations. We also ensure that the debates that we engage in are relevant with two definitions of that. One means to be relevant when it's opportune, appropriate in the time, place, and shape. Another is that it's relevant when it's done with the highest will to achieve excellence in terms of quality, when we do it well and when we do it at the right time and place. As we say, the goal of feminism is to achieve a fairer, more equal, more democratic society, a better society in a word. This is also the reason for being of the feminist economy. So thank you for all of your work and everything that is to come. We will be very attentive to your conclusions. I'm sure they will be useful and a guide for our future activities. Thank you to one and all. I just wanted to say one thing, I'll be brief, and it's that uh, I get increasingly the feeling, I mean, I'm lucky enough to be the mayor of Barcelona, so I get to see lots of people and do lots of things that are not usually on the news, on the mainstream news. I 
I'm growing increasingly convinced that those of us who were treated as periphery in a patriarchal capitalist system, I mean, the many peripheries, the humble working class women, migrant feminist, LGBTI plus people, all of us, periphery, we are the social majority. So that's it. We need to take the key spaces in the economy, in the social space, in universities without apologizing or asking for permission. Let's do it.